Hey everybody, this is Jason Wright, and welcome back to another edition of ThreatWise TV. I'm very excited to have a return guest with me, and a very special one, co-founder of ThreatGrid and product line CTO, Dean DeBeer, and Thank fellow you. sailor. Absolutely. Thank Where's you, the last Jason. place you sailed at, man? Uh, regatta in St. Bots. So, You're doing a regatta? You're yeah. racing? Uh, 68 foot swan was a lot of fun. 68 a lot of fun. swan. You weren't yeah. sailing that by yourself, were you? Uh, no, 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 no. That's no, a big crew. No. I was crew. I was a grinder. So nice. <laughs> paying the bills, huh? Basically a grunt, paying the bills. Nice. Yep. I just got back from Puerto Vallarta. We had a 48 foot catamaran, oh, but it's the first time that I've ever swam with the dolphins. I mean, with the boat. They, we came right up on the pod and they started swimming right with the boat. You could almost reach down and touch them. An amazing experience, first time, but uh, hopefully not the last time for me. Well, I hope you got video. I most certainly did, but we can't show it here. We've got more important things to talk about, and this is the Threat Grid product. This is a lot of the heart and soul of a lot of security intelligence that happens within Cisco and, and our threat intelligence services and, and our customers. Tell me a little bit about what Threat Grid is and where this came from. Absolutely. Well, uh, obviously, ThreatGrid is near and dear to me. Yeah. Um, Dove, Uran, and myself, we founded ThreatGrid early 2010. Yep. Uh, the goal behind ThreatGrid from day one was to make malware analysis and threat intelligence available for the masses. Right? Can we simplify it? Can we make it easy? Can we make it fast, extensible, and available? Excellent. And it's become, like I said, such a part of the heart and soul of, of our technologies. Not only is there a product that we offer to customers, that is available, but it is the back end of some of our existing technologies, and it is a tool that Talos is using to do their research to figure out how to update other technologies. So it's got this huge cross section of information where it's an external product, but we use it to fund our other threat intelligence services across the existing technologies that we have. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you mentioned Telus. Uh, we have a very close partnership with Telus. They leverage threat grid data to do a lot of their intelligence mining, yep. uh, finding new net new attacks, providing that back to the products. Uh, we integrate with a large portion of the Cisco portfolio, Meraki, NextGen Firewall, uh, ESA, WSA, M4 endpoints, obviously. Obviously. Uh, CTA, uh, umbre it's a huge umbrella. Uh, and, gr and growing, I'm sure. And growing, and growing. And that's internal to Cisco. We also what? have a number of, external, uh, number of external integrations as well. I love talking about third party partners. Talk about who do we work with? Does uh, it, is it bringing it in or is it sending it out? It's both. It's both. Yeah. Uh, a good example Threat Quotient. You recently had them, we on, have the them on the show. Very recently. Right? Um, Other threat intelligence platforms, I'm sure, as well. Absolutely. Uh, threat Connect would be another one of them. Digital but Shadows. Dis yeah. Digital Shadows. Mm -hmm. uh, we also integrate with a number of sims out there. Uh, Q Radar, Splunk, uh, and others. Logarithm. Uh, Logarithm, ArcSight as well. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, I mean, the goal behind ThreatGrid was always to be extensible, right? It's built on APIs. The same APIs we use for the dashboard uh, and the product port portal itself are the same APIs that we make available to every user and every product integration that we do. Well, I know that's part of what you wanted to show too, is how easy it is to get information in and out of this product when customers are using it. So tell me what we're looking at here as, the, as a, a wholly redefined dashboard from the last time that I demoed the product. And I demoed it plenty of times, by the way. That but this true. looks very that different. Um, it's definitely a little more refined. Um, we've we're spent a lot of time working on uh, better data presentation, right? Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is the large volume of automated submissions. You, know, yeah. you might have your email security appliances, your web security, uh, firewall, um, you know, endpoint, all submitting content to ThreatGrid. Right, so how do you drill down into that content? How do you figure out what is important, what is not um, from large volume submissions? And it could be in the tens of thousands a day for a large customer, right? right. Um, so what we've done is, you know, not only has the dashboard been completely, and the product uh, portal been completely redesigned, but we, we've started to make it easier for people to start automating the extraction of that data. So very quickly, um, you know, you can, for any, anything you see in our, in our portal, you can, you can get the same API query that we use to produce that data. So whether it be on this screen or others, it's all available to you. So this can start sending information out to even third-party firewalls or other SIM vendors, like we said? Absolutely, they might have their own, um, you know, their own intelligence data store that they want to populate. Um, it could be a SIM, it could be a firewall, it could be an endpoint product. Even non-Cisco security technologies? Absolutely. <laughs> 
<laughs> Did uh, such things exist? Hard to believe, hard to believe. Um, but, you know, we're, we're, we're slowly getting there. We don't have the entire market, but until we do, we want to interoperate with third-party technologies. There's always going to be other vendors that we need to be able to communicate with, and that's an important part. It's not just communicating with Cisco. Third party is very important, and I always like to highlight that. Right, and that's part of the strategy for the SPG today as well, right? Excellent. That open, extensible architecture, and these APIs are designed to drive that. Perfect. Um, so, you know, let's drill down into what we're looking at yeah. here, right? So, um, we could assume that we have a large number of uh, submissions from multiple products. Um, we can drill down into those. Uh, it takes you to a very easy sample manager um, that has a very detailed uh, ability to filter uh, the data that you're looking at. Right. So we're looking um, at, a, at a lot of individual file submissions and our score right. of them. So this okay. was for a 24-hour period. I randomly selected that period. Um, now the question becomes, how do I use this data, right? We have a lot of data here. Each one of these represent a file and a file analysis, right? Um, which is going to produce domains, IPs, everything else. Um, so what would be a use case for this? Um, am I impacted is a question that you always ask. Sure. Right? Which one of these impact me? Uh, perhaps you get a FBI flash bulletin or you're part mm -hmm. of FSISAC or another information sharing group. Any kind of alert that's like, right. hey, this is something bad that's going on. Let's assume how do you, we, get, yeah, you get a domain, right? Yeah, Domains how do we figure out if, we're, if we've seen that on our network, if that's part of the traffic that we're generating out there? Let's assume you have that FBI flash bulletin, mm -hmm. right? Um, and they provide a domain. The question you, you know, your analysts are going to ask themselves, are, are we impacted by this campaign? Have right? we seen this on our network? Right. And have we seen this domain? What do we know about this domain? What context can I put around this domain to, make, to help me make more informed decisions about what to do if I see it, right? So, and across all of our products today, you can search and query for this data uh, in a lot of different manners, right? In the case of Threckred, what we're doing is we're querying against every submission that we've seen from our portfolio of products submitting to Threckred. But on top of that, we can actually query globally for that domain to see if we've seen it elsewhere in the, the Threckred ecosystem, which is tens of thousands of customers. So today. not just within the customer's environment, but worldwide, have we seen this elsewhere? And how does one customer's network and events compared to the rest of the world. Absolutely, right? Perfect. So it gives you context, right? And everything is about context today, and context allows you to make faster decisions. Right. Uh, so in this case, we noticed that this domain has been seen in a handful of samples, um, all submitted in the past 24 hours, right? Mm -hmm. We can very quickly determine what product of ours submitted this, so we understand did it come in via email or web or another Endpoint means. Endpoint or firewall. Okay. Exactly so. So let's drill down into that product. Um, and it's important to note that a couple of things that we do call out that are important to an analyst are um, first seen and last seen as a good example. Sure. Right? When did I first see that file? When did I first see that domain? When did I last see it? Um, now, what that means is it allows the analyst to start making decisions as to the extent of that campaign, how long running it's been, were they the only people impacted or other people been impacted, right? So those are important questions that an analyst wants to answer and answer quickly. Yes. Um, and we use Threckred data to do the same thing, right? To help them answer questions quickly. Our behavioral indicators were designed with that express purpose in mind. Sure. Um, obviously, you can query for all of these via APIs. Um, but what you'll notice with every one of our indicators is that we call out uh, the data that triggered that indicator, mm -hmm. um, as well as a description, right? We, there's a severity, uh, all these details. Now, quite honestly, the combination of the data that triggered the, the indicator and the description um, is incredibly powerful. That description allows the user to understand why we're calling this out, Absolutely. why we see this as important. Yeah, why, why is this something that is throwing up a red flag? And one of the things I remember from demoing this back in the day was the description was always so easy to understand and written in plain English, which is important for younger network security administrators or uh, those that are more junior coming into the field to start to educate themselves. So this tool starts to really unfold and, and shine a lot of light on what could possibly be bad in a file, not just for the seasoned veterans that are analyzing files. Exactly so, right? Oftentimes people don't have the time to go through every single you know process listing, every right. single registry key creation, every single file modification, right? And they could be tens of thousands of uh, hundreds of thousands, you know, for every analysis, right? Excellent. So by calling out that which is most important and then adding additional context to it, we allow the user to make faster decisions. Uh, in the case over here, you'll notice as well that we're now calling out data provided by other products within our portfolio, and in this case, Cisco Umbrella. But what's interesting about this example is we're calling out a domain from Cisco Umbrella that we know to be malicious, but that downloaded an executable file. 
So the compound composition of the various indicators and the data allow for people to make far more confident determinations as to whether something's malicious or not, or suspicious. Right? Then, then what do we do once we have decided, hey, I've seen it in a couple places and a couple ways that it's bad. I know that we've got a whole nother demo on what we used to call visibility, and Correct. now we are calling? Cisco Threat Response. Okay, right? so we've rebranded that, but that functionality is built in and integrated here as well, right? Absolutely, so you will notice with Cisco Threat Response is a functionality that, that comes along with it is called Casebook, right? Right, uh, love and that Casebook. You'll see Casebook pop up here in the corner. Casebook is available across uh, you know, any, any one of Cisco's products uh, through a browser plugin today, or direct integrations with those products. Let's say that again for a second. So now you've made Casebook not just one of the features of AMP, but a browser plugin that can be used for any Cisco security product. Any product. Uh, or any, any even third-party product. Correct. So you could be uh, in a Splunk dashboard, for example, highlight certain data, add it to your investigation, see the enrichment occur in real time uh, to determine which indicators are of interest or not, and then start an investigation in uh, Cisco Threat Response. You guys have been busy. Uh, yeah, working hard. I love it. Well, the future of this is really bright. I know we're going to continue to increase the integration and the exchange of information, not just with Cisco, but with other third-party technologies. This is a whole host of new features and functionalities that you've put together. And man, great work on the product. Thank you so much. We're going to let you get back to it. You'll keep building this, so I'll keep selling it for you here. Telling everybody about it, at least, and showing you demonstrations and straight to the point of how this stuff is working and how it's going to save you time and save you money and get you to that mean time to remediation and response faster. So that's what we're trying to do here with ThreatGrid. If you want to learn a little bit more about this product, I'd encourage you to go over to cisco.com slash go slash ThreatGrid. You'll see a whole host of information and that you can uh, research and take a deeper dive into everything. But for now, I'll say thanks again for my repeat guest, Dean pleasure. DeBeer. Absolute pleasure. And uh, we'll be out with you next time on ThreatWise TV. Thank you.